What's up, YouTube? Today we are looking at Slap by Yum Audio and Mr. Bill. So first, before we get started, full disclosure, this is not a sponsored video. However, they did actually send me a copy of this plugin to have a look at, but they're not asking to see the video beforehand, so they're not altering my opinion in any way. Also, that being said is they've extended a bit of a discount, and I'm gonna also be doing a bit of a giveaway. So like I mentioned before, Yum Audio will be extending a discount using the following code, which I'm also gonna post in the description and in the first pinned comment. They're also told me that they've recently launched a Discord channel, and anybody joining their Discord channel gets an extra 20% discount coupon. So you can actually use the glitch as well as their discord coupon all of that information will be down below i will also be doing a bit of a giveaway where i'll be giving away one of their bundles and three of their plugins in a little bit of a sound design challenge which i'm going to be doing in my discord so anyway more info about that will be in the description and in the first pinned comment anyway let's dive in and have a look at slap by yum audio and mr bull so slap is an audio effect designed to replace and enhance the transients of your sounds. So you may be wondering why I don't just do this kind of thing using the Bitwig replacer device. And there's a couple of reasons. I feel like slap is a little bit tighter and more responsive specifically for faster repeating signals. For example, if we have a look at replacer, sometimes it doesn't quite hit it. I mean, we can still dial in the threshold and the hold, but you'll still see sometimes some of these hits don't quite make it through. You see that? Whereas I feel like with slap, it's almost like hits every single transient, even these really fast repeats. And I feel like it's because perhaps Replacer was designed to replace full sounds, whereas I feel like maybe Slap was designed to specifically replace and detect just the transients. So maybe that's why it's just a little bit more responsive for these really fast clicky signals. Anyway, that aside, it comes with a variety of really good samples to just quickly get a good sound straight off the bat, and also a variety of really cool effects, which we're gonna look at in this video. So like I said, you can potentially get very similar results using Bitwig's replacer and a bunch of other Bitwig devices and your own homebrewed samples and all that kind of thing. But just being able to throw something on which has a selection of everything that you need at your fingertips is a workflow enhancer for sure. Okay, so let's quickly run through the interface and the features. So top left, you have the sample player section. This is where you can choose the different categories of samples and the different samples themselves. You can load in your own custom samples as well. Over here is where you choose whether you want the actual, the plugin to do its thing or not, or at least the sample section to be on or not. Here, this button basically chooses whether you wanna replace the transient, or whether you wanna layer the transient on top of the original signal. So this is pretty cool because to do the replace transient, it would be an extra step of setup in Bitwig Replacer. You'd have to do a side chain situation and everything going on. Whereas here, it's kind of just automatically all set up, ready to go straight out the box, which is cool. So then over here on the right hand side here, we have the display, which basically just allows us to see how the plugin is working. And it also offers us various other settings. So if, for example, it's not quite hitting the transients as we need, we can kind of dial it in with some other settings. Like I believe this is a noise gate. And then we have two different types of transient detection mode. Generally, I find A, the first one, the default, just works straight off the bat. So I never really find myself using B anyway. Then over here, we have the ability to change how the display actually runs, whether it's static one shot, which just shows the first transient, or whether it runs freely to the side like this. Okay, so now we start to look at the effects. And this, I think, is where the plugin truly shines, as if it wasn't like awesome enough already. These effects are really, really special. So we have six effects to choose from. We can freely reorder them kind of in a modular fashion. We can turn them on or off as we need them. So let's look at these effects one by one. First, we have the subharmonic synthesizer. This is really, really cool. Essentially what it's doing is it's basically just synthesizing a sine tone at the level that you kind of set over here. 
but it's using an audio follower from the actual transient itself. So you can kind of set the length over here. So essentially the transient detection triggers the sign tone and you set the length like this. Then you can actually set the root note of the sign itself. So say for example, the track is in like a particular note, like D sharp, we can synthesize the sign tone exactly at the root note. So we can get these like almost subby bass drum sounds, but tuned to the specific frequencies and stuff. Okay, the next effect we have is the transient shaper, shape. So this basically just allows you to dial in the attack and release. I think by tight and snap, or at least I think this is attack and attack speed. So remember, like I said, being able to reorder them, you actually get different sounds. So like, for example, the transient shaper before the sub synth will change how the sub synth reacts to the input. The next effect is fat. I believe this is kind of like an OTT. The next effect is clap, which basically just synthesizes a noise layer similar to the sub synth, but this is kind of designed to emulate a clap sound. And the next one is spray, which is a reverb. And then clip, which is obviously a clipper. So I like to put this one before the clap and the spray, just to kind of catch that subtone. And then we have some uh, three dials over here, which dial in the overall effect sound. So squash would be final compression, low cut would be EQ and tame is again more EQ. I think this removes some of the top and this removes some of the bottom. Then we have effects amount, which is just a dry or wet for all of the effects not the actual transient system. And then bypass, which is like an overall bypass thing. And then tune, which I believe affects like these synthesis modules. I'm not sure if it affects the transient layer as well though. So we could potentially key track this using one of Bitwig's modulators to get that sub to kind of like hit like tuned 808. Do you know what I mean? So let's actually reduce some of this low cut because we want to hear that. crazy what you can do to just like a random drum loop. So we can also like jump in here and change the like different clicks to kind of like get different textures on the transient. We can also pitch shift this using this parameter over here. We can gain it using this parameter over here. We can change the timbre, which I believe is like a filter over here. And then we can also choose loop points or like start and end points for the sample using these green bars over here.
So like just like this randomized drum loop thing, kick, add a kick and snare, mess around with something like slap for a little bit. You've got an instant inspiration machine. Oh, that's so sick. Listen to it without slap. Cool, so there's also some really good presets built in here for just like adding this kind of stuff to sounds randomly. Fantastic, fantastic sound for just transforming things. So there are also some other kind of more creative and I would say useful examples. So another really useful case for this plugin is on clipped drums. So often for this kind of more heavier drum sound, we often end up clipping the drums quite heavily. I mean, if we look at the sample, we can see the extent of the clipping that's happening here, but it kind of adds to the tone of the sound. So that's good. However, sometimes this can affect how punchy the sound actually is in the mix. So being able to just change the transient to something that's a little bit clickier can really help to make these like sort of more clipped drum sounds poke through in the mix. Let me show you an example. So even just like on the default setting, we might just tame it back a little bit on the gain. But even just the default setting can make something like a clipped kick or a clipped snare even just pop through a mix a bit nicer. So sometimes you may get a bit of like phasing stuff happening if you're laying it over a kick. You may just wanna shift this back a little bit or choose a different sample which doesn't have as much of a sine wave shape. And then sometimes instead of replacing, I'll use the layer when I'm doing it in this context, just because you can kind of almost hear that replacement kind of side chaining in. Do you hear that? It's really subtle, but it just punches a little bit harder. What we can do is we can actually clip this so that it's still at the original audio volume.
So this can also be good on something like a drum bus, like the kick and the snare. Although in these situations, I like to put a different one on the snare because we can use something like that clap synthesizer to just give it a bit more room, like almost a bit of like drum reverb being synthesized over the top. So here we have the same transient on the kick and the snare, except we're just adding a little bit of extra maybe reverb and clap to the snare to just give it a bit more liveliness. Having the same transient on the kick and the snare can almost gel them together. It kind of sounds like it's coming from the same space. So you can also use this in a similar context on bass or leads to help them pop through the mix a bit nicer. So what I want to do is I quickly just want to make a kind of sub bass sound using a little bit of noise, a sine oscillator, and then some soft clip distortion. Notice how a lot of these sounds have a very similar texture in the kind of transient and it kind of glues them together in the groove. And that's because a lot of them are actually the same transient. And I mean, it's the same with leads, you know, you can use this to help leads cut through the track. So for example, here, let's duplicate this. We're going to just change the context a little bit, like, for example, set this to uh, like the init. So specifically with like detuned stuff, it can be very apparent that like the transient isn't quite there, you know? So here in this case, like the lasery zap sound of that sine wave pitch, of that uh, pitch shifted sine wave is getting a little bit too much. So here in this context, we're using slap to kind of replace it with something that's a little bit less harsh. So we're kind of soothing the transient of this harsh transient with this plugin as well, which is something that you can do. So it's kind of like the opposite effect. <laughs> Okay, so the last thing I want to try is a long transient on a chord sound, render it out and reverse it to kind of like layer in a kind of like sweepy effect. Oh, that is cool. That is cool. I really like that kind of like off kelter groove that that creates, you know, adding a long transient and then reversing it.
Awesome. That about sums it up. Remember the discount codes, which I was talking about, both the code, which I'm giving you, as well as their coupon that you get from joining the Yum Audio Discord. And also don't forget the sound design challenge, which I will be doing in my Discord, giving away uh, one of their bundles and three of their plugins. Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. And big thanks to Yum Audio for sending me this plugin to check out and also for extending a bit of a discount on to you folk and also helping us out with some prizes for a bit of a giveaway. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that like button. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.